Welcome to the Lila Life Show. I'm your host, Linda Andrews, and you've tuned in to the right place to up-level in your life and business. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Lila Life Show. I'm your host, Linda Andrews. I want to take a moment to thank you for being here. If you've been following along with the podcast, you've seen some different evolutions, twists, turns, and right now we're on a really nice framework of going with a solo episode with myself, doing some teaching, doing some coaching, to then having on a guest. And these guests usually are having to do with consciousness, awareness, wellness, and uh, we're going to be sticking to that format going from solo episode to guest slash expert episode and bouncing back and forth. So again, thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. And my aim is to be serving, to supporting you, uh, taking these tools, teachings, helping you implement them into your life. If you're having some wins, if you're having some successes, I want to know about them. This is important to me. It's what gets me up in the morning. And I want to also just invite you to be on the lookout. We're having the Lila Life Collective relaunching in the next month. And if this is something you've been considering, you need some extra support, you want these tools on demand, you want more, uh, you'll want to think about joining. This is a monthly membership. There's an option to be totally on demand using the Teachable app, getting the lessons that way, or upgrading into um, what is known as one-on-one coaching with me. I am an integrative coach, meaning that I support you in your conscious up-leveling in life and business using a number of different modalities and tools to help that happen. So I want to put all that out there, be on the lookout. And for today's episode, we're diving into mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when I say that? I'm sure it could be a bunch of different things. And for today's topic, I want to talk about how mutually exclusive relates or doesn't relate to the Lila way. The Lila Lila way being be, heal, and create. Having your time, energy, and attention focus on each of these aspects, making up the Lila way. And what is the spoiler alert is these are not mutually exclusive. Okay, so you do not need to be 100% healed, quote unquote, to then be 100% perfect at being, quote unquote, to then be 100% in your creative mojo. You're going to be vacillating, moving through each of these pieces regularly. And you may notice you may have a lot of time, energy, and attention on one, and then need to put time, energy, and attention on the other. And you can do that. You can pivot, you can move. These are not mutually exclusive. And I, I'm speaking from my own experience where there's been some times in my life where I felt so defeated, so um, like, I'm so fucked up, like I can't go, like, and not, not wanting to do certain things or show up in certain ways until I healed that or I did that. And it's all a work in progress. And you're on your perfect journey in this perfect moment with a million, zillion, probably infinity different variables and having that grace for yourself as you're on the journey doing your thing. So I wanna start this conversation uh, by just mentioning awareness. This is always usually the starting point, noticing how you're showing up in your healing, how you're showing up in your being, how you're showing up in your creating. The being is sort of like, obviously your awareness is being, because that is what being is, is your awareness. Uh, But I, I think it goes for all three of these. When you are in this awareness, in this noticing, the non-judgmental observer, we're looking for information, feedback, the facts, the facts of the matter, and noticing what habits and patterns that are going on, showing up in your life that may or may not be supportive to your most empowered self, okay? So that inventory is helpful any of the time, all of the time, maybe not all the time, that can get a bit too much, (laughs) Um, but it's a nice way to look at how am I showing up in my healing work? How am I showing up in my being work? How am I showing up in my creating work? And where is my awareness within each of those? And which habits and patterns are supporting my empowerment through this, okay? This term insourcing your power has really stuck with me. Uh, One of my Kundalini teachers talks about this a lot, Hudman Jyot, and she's talking about the power within versus pulling the power from outside. I think hand in hand with this conversation 
can also be the desire for validation. And so just noticing even where the um, impetus and the catalyst to your actions is showing up. And are you in the position where you're looking for somebody to give you something or to fix quote unquote you, or do you have this coming from within? And again, starting with that awareness can be a huge first step in just seeing like, whoa, uh, I'm doing this because it's for validation. Oh, whoa, I'm looking to get this from this person because I don't feel like I can give that or get that from myself. It's a really nice starting point as you're navigating this and noticing, am I outsourcing maybe too much? <laughs> or am I working with different people that make me feel like I don't have the power within myself? Again, an awareness opportunity. After the awareness is conscious new choices. So you may notice, oh, you know, I do need to make some adjustments or these habits and patterns are no longer serving me. So I'm going to make that conscious decision, decide to cut off, right? From Latin, I am deciding to cut off the other alternatives to then go forward with these new choices that I'm deeming supportive because of the inquiry and the awareness I just had. So that's the next part of this process. And fucking up is part of it. <laughs> perfection or the illusion of perfection, the gift of progress, the gift of the feedback loop to be able to say, oh, wow, okay, I'm getting this information, I'm getting the same information, I'm getting disempowering information, I need to make a change. Oh, I did that thing again. Oh, shit, I really messed it up. Oh, Okay, it's okay. It's all okay. And this is, and you've heard this come up in past episodes, uh, unplugging from the right or wrong, and just looking with this observer, this neutral observer at yourself, saying what could be the, the new decision, the new choice, the empowering opportunity, and the grace. This is the grace for the fuck up. The grace for, oh, I did it again. Some of these habits and patterns are so ingrained so deep from even uh, pre-birth, as crazy as that sounds, like womb time. And these are impressions that run deep. These are impressions that some of these different tools that we have access to, uh, if you're not aware of what's going on, they're putting big impressions. I just came off of almost a, it ended up being closer to two months social media hiatus. Uh, and that was after, you know, pretty dysfunctional experience with social and just feeling really sensitive to the tools, really sensitive to the information that I'm consuming and wanting to just be in different relationship. And so for me, that was stepping back. That was understanding how it affects me, noticing like, oh, wow, certain decisions, certain things I'm doing feel really motivated by how I'm appearing. Oh, this doesn't feel good. Okay. So how can I make some shifts in all this that feel like I can maintain my integrity to myself <laughs> and then show up no different than it would be if I showed up at the coffee shop versus getting completely inundated with messaging, with programming, uh, with things that I didn't necessarily want to be getting into when I went on, say, social media. One, one very specific example of something recently that I had some uh, feedback loop opportunities to look at, okay? It's amazing when everything's going well and in the gap of things going well to things going not so hot is this contrast that can give rise to a lot of gratitude if you let it a lot of information that you can take in, again, that feedback loop and start making adjustments in your life. But the reminder here is that we are all made for thriving. And so however many standard deviations you feel like you are from thriving, that itself is an invitation to start to make some adjustments. And these don't need to be drastic and monumental, although they can be. They can be as baby steps or as transformative as you want, as you want. And so really understanding your motivations for making these changes in connection to what you desire, what you're creating, how you're showing up, what you want to experience as a result of the healing work to allow your mind showing you what's possible. 
Okay. The other thing that I think is really worth noting right now is control. There may be control dynamics that you are engaged with that are disempowering and you don't even realize. Maybe your own relationship to control, the ways you like to exhibit control, the ways you seek control underneath this can be the desire for safety, which is a human need. We all want to feel safe, but at what cost and at what extent is this tipping into that disempowerment? And only you can know that. And this may change. The definitions of all these things can change for you. Uh, words as medicine, understanding that you get to be in the driver's seat of defining your words and making the adjustments that you need is as it relates to your relationships with other humans could be supportive to give them updates of where you're coming from, where you're at. And oh, by the way, this is what this means to me. What does that mean to you getting into curious dialogue? Um, but the point being that having that ability to really check in and define what this means for you. So control, uh, maybe even the word control feels sticky. This is a word that can have a lot of power in itself and a lot of you know, associations, past memories, traumas even. So looking at what does control mean to me? How am I trying to control things? Uh, where am I exerting control in a way that is disempowering in my life? Just starting to notice. And notice if this connects to any decision-making that could then in some way be even a little manipulative. I'm doing this for this outcome versus explicitly saying it, being transparent. Again, this is all for you, but I think these are really important words as medicine right now to be looking at. The, the, I wanna spend some time on healing for a little here where it's easy to get into healing to get out of things. So at its simplest, getting into healing to get out of life. Like life can feel so intense. It can feel so intense. <laughs> uh, and then it's like, I'm broken. I have issues. I have this. And then there can almost be this obsession to the healing and into the work and the personal development. I see this a lot. And again, I'm not saying any of this is good or bad. It's an opportunity to be aware and understanding that at what point is, is the healing feeling supportive or is there a, a tipping point where it becomes too much and it, it's preventing from other things? Uh, an example I see a ton is like, I'm going to pay all this money and heal all these things and I'm not going to manage my finances. And while I'm doing all this healing work and not managing my finances, I'm creating actually tremendous amount of financial trauma that I'm just still not even looking at. That's going to be there at the end of all the healing work, quote unquote, healing work. And then I say, quote unquote, cause it's an ongoing lifelong journey. Uh, and then oh, should I still haven't dealt with this? Oh, now I want to avoid it even more. And in that tipping point of avoid it even more can be a lot of disempowering actions that come from there. So finances is one. There's many others, your health, relationships, but just noticing what am I avoiding because I'm healing, because I'm, I'm saying healing as a blanket statement, you know, fixing myself, whatever. Healing fixing myself underneath that feels like brokenness. And so engaging in the healing journey from a place of wholeness, understanding that my engagement with these different modalities, tools, support systems is reminding me how whole and worthy I am as a human versus reminding me all the ways I'm broken and I'll never be okay. These are, that's a huge mindset shift. And so any, any modalities, any healing work that you're doing right now, just take a look at, am I feeling like I'm approaching this from wholeness and worthiness or brokenness? And if you start to tune into that and start to bring more of the wholeness and worthiness into the healing work, personally, my theory on this uh, is that you will see radical transformation way faster because of the shift in that energy. And when it is the latter, where it's like, I'm broken, it's this nonstop engagement with 
the brokenness and like it's like reopening the wound in, in a way. So if that's for you pulling way back, grounding, centering in, I'm not saying that any modalities, any practitioners are bad, that they're manipulating or anything. I'm just saying you have an opportunity to be integrity to how you show up, what you're trying to get from that. Understanding is this getting me closer to wholeness and worthiness? Is this taking that away? Do I want my healing to be connected to wholeness and worthiness does that is that even where my aim is i mean i think there's a lot of people that may be feeling so bad that their aim is to just feel better but still it's like a broken paradigm so uh that that's some supercharging there i brought this up before and you can join me in this but one of my favorite things to do right now is to tap into myself on a cellular level and start talking to all my trillions of cells and get some sunlight on them and talk about the DNA upgrades that I'm experiencing all the time. And to really let myself feel that on a cellular level, let myself energetically give my body exactly what it needs, honoring the innate intelligence of my system and the power that it has and flows within all the time, no matter what, without me doing anything. My heart's beating, my lungs are pumping air, and I didn't have to micromanage that experience. So coming back to that connection to control and understanding, actually, I'm not in control much here, right? And so that can bring this immediate opportunity of grace, presence, gratitude to all the things that always are independent of how much you think you're controlling them or not. Okay, great. If you have a belief that my body can heal itself, I can heal from anything. This is a very different belief than I'm broken. And that's this invitation to self-healing. Greg Braden, Bruce Lipton, these two gentlemen, Dr. Joe Dispenza, uh, brilliant, just brilliant. There are three gentlemen that really opened my mind to it. I'm sure there's plenty others uh, that are doing this work, but I would highly recommend that you just do the DNA trick I mentioned with the sun and understand that your body has an innate ability to self-heal. I can heal anything. That is a very different belief system to engage in the world and navigate and decision make from. And you know what is radical and important to that is the ability to trust yourself. And so I think this correlation of self-trust to belief in my body can heal itself, they, they got to be going together. And the self-trust piece may be the first piece to work on. And this is that tiny practices, baby steps, trusting yourself, definitely adding in the trust to your intuition, uh, which is, is, again, not mutually exclusive in any of this. It's just right there. And I would like to just pivot in this to noticing your body's energetics. And so some of the words I use, some of the language I use may not feel normal to you. Um, just do a little internal check. Like when I say tuning into your body's energetics, like, what does that mean to you? What does that feel like to you? What I mean by that is literally the feeling that you have in your whole system, your nervous system, your body system. And then what, what pairs to this is how you show up with other people. How do you feel? Noticing when you get those little like gut dumps, <laughs> made that up, uh, or like heart flutters or throat close-ups, right? Our body's sending us so many messages all the time. And are you paying attention to what those messages are and just first even noticing them? And so the noticing them, you may not know what a, what did I say? A gut thump, what that is or feels like uh, when your throat closes up. It, it's like, what is that attached to? You don't know, but can you just start noticing when that happens? You know, I, I've had friends, I get a weird twitch or I have this or I have that. Just, oh, great. Like just notice that. Notice when it flares up more. Notice, you know, I'll give a personal example. I was having these migraines that were insane. <laughs> I mean, just so insane and debilitating. And this is three to three to five days sometimes of migraine pain. I calculated how many days a year. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm missing so much life and I'm in so much pain. Uh, so one of the things I got was the Curable app and I liked it. And it really helped me bring in that somatic awareness to like, what, what, where is this pain right now? What else is attached to it? And it was through some of these prompts that it started to release a bit. 
And on top of that, um, just asking myself, like, what, you know, I, I, from those moments of the, the headaches, I had to make radical changes in my routine, my schedule, in how many times I'm seeing how many different people, all the things. And coming back to the energy piece, I'm noticing where the stagnation is. I'm noticing how my body's responding. I'm sensing my energetics, my energy level, and uh, letting that be a part of my feedback loop. Okay. This energy management, I'm mentioning all those changes that I had to make, the energy management, the more attuned that you are to yourself and your system, you may notice a direct correlation to increased sensitivity and you're feeling more, you're noticing more. And, and there's definitely points in time where that can feel extremely overwhelming. Uh, it's like, fuck, I, I feel and notice everything. You may be noticing empathy up. You, you notice intuition up. You may feel like a little bit of psychic powers up. Your dreams may be more intense. You're just able literally to process so much more through your system. And so energy management is key. And it's not energy management in the way of like, this is my schedule this year. You may need to pull back, pair up, pair down and shift regularly. Uh, you heard or you will hear, uh, we have Tracy Lynn on in a future, future episode. She's talking about having COVID and just having to cancel her life basically for three weeks. I had a similar experience uh, with an illness a couple weeks ago. And the point is that we don't always know how we're going to feel and show up every single day. And there is a time maybe to push through things, but there's maybe even more of a time to honor yourself, honor your energetics, see how you're feeling, knowing when you need rest, knowing when you need to get a little bit more engaged with the sleep health honoring what your body needs. Again, awareness, understanding your energetics, starting to tune in with to those somatic, meaning bodily experiences that you're having and incorporate all this into the feedback loop. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Leela Life Show. Be sure to share, like, and comment. Tune in next week. And if you're not already a member of the Leela Life Collective, you'll want to be. So take a look in the show notes and be sure you sign up today. Have a beautiful day.